So we are back after an eight month hiatus living in a new city, in a new house, and we are here with what is my newest project and will hopefully be the first series for this channel. Now anyone who knows anything about 3D printing will have recognized this model as soon as they saw it, what it was. Now, I have had, I bought an Ender 3 like a year ago, and I have been really happy with that 3D printer, but now that I'm making more and more projects, I decided that I want something better, because for that printer, for the 250 euros I spent on it, it does its job, but it does just that. It has nothing special, nothing extra, and I think it's time for an upgrade. So instead of spending a significant amount of money to buy something uh, off the shelf, I decided, hey, I make a lot of things, why don't I make a printer of my own? And after two months and a lot of sleepless nights debating on dumb design choices, we have ended up with this CAD model here. Now, this this printer takes a, takes inspiration from the the Hevort or Hevo RT made from Mirad C, which is an amazing 3D printer and an amazing project. And I will link it down at the description of the video. You can check the guy's YouTube channel out. He has some great videos about high performance 3D printing. And generally, what what I take from the Hevort are first of all these things here. The bed is held up by three of these little uh, wobble wings, uh, Mirage C calls them, and their point is that you can level the bed just by moving these motors. You don't have to do anything with knobs like the Ender 3 where you have to turn some knobs to level the bed. You can just have a little switch that touches the bed at different points and then it levels itself. And you can do that before every print so you can have a perfect first layer. Other than that, I also took the electronic cabinet. I put it on the side like the Hevort. I really like this choice here. It's better than having it on the back or on the bottom. And that's essentially where the similarities end well they're both of course core xy printers but other than that well he has a single head uh, uh, tool end where i have i decided to go with a tool changer system and a tool changer basically means you can change heads in in the print so you can have different materials or different colors in the same print uh, so other than that, we have the motors on the inside, where else the Hevort has them on the outside. This is so we don't have anything protruding at the back. Now there might be a temperature problem, we will see about that in the future. Uh, what else is different? Oh, I'm using for the Z-axis lead screws and linear rods, whereas he uses linear rails and um, ball screws. I thought that was a bit extreme for the Z-axis, so I decided to use this purely for cost-cutting measures. If I do find a problem with that, I will change it, but if not, we will keep it this way. Uh, what else is there to say about this? No, uh, things to be added to the CAD model. This is not final by any means. I will have to design little tool holders that will go on this side here, so the head can go and pick them up. And I will also have to change this door. This door here is currently way too big. I will have to split it down in two and have two doors. You can't see them right now because they're hidden, but this will all be enclosed and we'll have a nice acry acrylic door that will be split in two and you can open it like a closet. And that's how I think about it, about the design. I'm now going to go over to the parts that I have and see what we have and what will be all in this printer. So this is currently the Ender 3 setup here. It is just a plain Ender 3 and I've currently connected a Raspberry Pi to it so I can monitor the prints while I'm away, while I'm printing all the parts for the new printer, so it doesn't mess up. So, here we have a, a table with a bunch of all the new parts. Now, what we got here is, well, first of all, these are the beds. These are four Prusa Mark III uh, beds, not Prusa, sorry. They're, they're designed by Joseph Prusa, the original thing, but they're not used in Prusas. So we got four of them, so we can individually control four, side, four sides of the bed. So we can, if we want to have a small print, we don't have to waste a lot of power. What else? We have a bunch of bags of mechanical parts and electrical parts. Uh, we have a, an emergency stop button. This here is the glass, is a glass plate. It is from Creality. This is literally the only thing I could find for this size, like, rel relatively fast. This might be switched out in the future. Uh, timing belt, this is 10 millimeters for a very, very rigid little movement system. Bunch of wire. These 
our linear rods for the wobble wing. What else do we have? Uh, some screw kits, some JST connectors. This is some PTG in black in case I need to print any other models in black. In here are the linear rails. We have linear rods and lead screws. And in here, in all of these boxes here and back here are the aluminum extrusions. This is 3030, 3030 and 2020. Now here in these boxes from Stepper Online, you can probably guess what is in here. These are the stepper motors that I am using. They are the same stepper motors that the Voron 2.4 uses. So these are very reliable and very good stepper motors and they can work at pretty high speeds. The other stepper online boxes are four 24 volt power supplies, two for the beds and one for the rest of the system. We have eight Big Tree Tech TMC2209 drivers which will go in this beauty right here, which is the board of choice. This is the big tree, uh, what was it, the, the Octopus uh, V1.1. If I could try and get it open with one hand here, let's see if this is possible, give me a second. After fiddling with the box, we got it open. As you can see, there are eight places for stepper motor drivers. And there is a lot of expandability on this board. This is a great little board. This is not the pro model. It can only take up, I think, to like 32 volts for the motors. If you want, you can get the pro model, which can do up to like 60 volts, which is insane, honestly. What else do we have? Uh, the Raspberry Pi that will run Clipper. This machine will run Clipper, which is already set up here for Hock to print on this. Um, that's about it for the parts. Yeah, some threaded inserts and stuff, some a bunch of random components, some idler pulleys, magnets for the tool changer system, relay boards for the beds. We have a bunch of fans and what is that, an AC socket. There, there's a bunch of other small little things that we'll go more into detail into other videos while we make this. Now, a notable thing that is missing are the tool heads. The tool heads are not yet here, I haven't made an order for them yet, but I will very soon. And then here I am slowly 3D printing all of the parts that are needed. Uh, I decided to go with PTG because I didn't trust this Ender printing ASA. I might have to switch them for ASA when the whole printer gets made. But other than that, that's about it. Uh, this will probably be a project that will span for quite a long time. I will try and get a video for all the major components of this project, designing the whole chassis and stuff, the electronics, the software and all that, and I hope that in the end we'll have a, a very nice printer to go along. If anyone for any reason wants to make this printer and you want, I don't know, the CAD instructions or maybe a parts list, do feel free to leave a comment and I will try to help you out. And uh, that's about it. I hope that, you know, now that I'm back in this new workshop here, that I can make a, a lot of other things. Here's a coil gun. You know, we'll have more great videos. So, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I hope we'll see you in the next part of this series, and goodbye.